Today we're going to be having a look at one of the cheapest automatic GMTs on the market. But the real question is, is it actually worth it for the money in 2022? Well let's have a look and find out. Hello all you beautiful people, welcome back to the VW channel. I hope that you are all safe and well. And today we are going to be having a look at the Picani Design GMT, the infamous or maybe famous uh, GMT, the one that is based on the Rolex Master 2 collection. And I picked one of these up in the sale with the original movement, not the upgraded NH34 movement, on the root beer style uh case i guess uh with the chocolate dial not the black dial and the reason why i did this is because i wanted to find out if in 2022 this watch still has the same value for money as it commanded a couple of years ago before we begin i know that we are into the festive season at the moment and although you may not be able to get this ship to you for christmas day if you are fancying this watch either for yourself or as a late gift for somebody else um please use the affiliate links down below. The affiliate links do not cost you any extra, but what it does do is gives a few coins to the VW purse so I can go out and buy some new watches um, in the new year for more reviews. But that that aside let's get into the review so as with most of these style pagani designs all of the design cues go to rolex and not to pagani however does that mean that this is a bad watch well this is what we're going to be finding out today so i bought the root beer um style uh version of this watch instead of the black dial though i went for the sunburst chocolate style dial i thought it was a bit interesting and unique and i wanted to see again how that would look in comparison into some of the other watches that I've picked up in the past. Now this watch will serve a very specific instance for me if it does stay in the collection. What I really see this watch as being is a holiday watch, something that you can wear and like on your wrist, but you're not going to be too worried about if A, it gets banged up, B, you lose it, or C, somebody else decides to grab it off your wrist. Not that I particularly tend to go to ho on holiday into really rough areas, but uh, you know, it, it can happen. So specifications of this watch are as follows. It is a 40 mil in diameter dial. It has a thickness of 12.5 mil thick. Obviously this is an automatic movement. I believe this one is called the ba -da -ba 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 -ba, Pearl DG5 833 GMT, which is a Chinese movement. I'm not sure what it's based on. If you know, leave that in the comments below. The lug width is 20 mil, which is a very strap uh, measurement which most people tend to, to go for you've got synthetic sapphire glass over the top of it or sapphire crystal as we would call it and you've also got a cyclops at the three o'clock and it's very rolex when it comes to the dial itself you've got a triangle at the 12 o'clock you've got rectangles at six and nine and circular indices throughout and obviously making a little window for the date at the three o'clock the bezel itself is a ceramic bezel insert. It is a two-tone insert with um, black on the top and a brown on the bottom. And it is a 120-click unidirectional bezel. It's not bi-directional and it's not frictionless. It is 120-click. However, as you can probably hear from this video, the clicks are very snicky and it goes in place pretty well. And there actually isn't any backplate or bounce with this one, which is interesting for a Pagani design, especially with the budget that they are working to. Now I usually don't go into the weights of these watches usually because I forget or I can't be bothered however the full weight of this watch is 151 grams and I had to remove three links which means that it weighs around 134 grams 133 134 grams um, and as such all of those specifications put together means this watch wears just about how you would expect it to wear on the wrist which is very nicely. Now you do have an open case back to see the movement at the back 
back of this watch just as you do with most of the other Pagani designs. It's not a particularly pretty movement, just like the NH35 isn't a particularly pretty movement, but it's appreciated anyway. And most of the people that will be buying this watch will either be having this as a mess around watch or potentially it might be one of your first automatic watches as well. So having a look at the back of the watch and being able to see how the working parts go for lack of a better phrase is good and I, I think that is quite a nice little touch from uh, Pagani Design which differentiates it um, from other homage watches of this nature. Loom on this watch is just regular Pagani Design standards that you would expect. It is nothing to write home about and not very impressive at all. I have heard that in the new NH34 versions of this watch you've got a loomed ceramic bezel and you've got slightly better loom on the dial. However this variant of the watch, the one that is a root beer design, hasn't got the NH34 on it and as such won't have those upgrades too. But all in all in this watch I feel that I've got a quite a good version of it this time the bezel as I've mentioned before aligns pretty well it wears really nicely on wrist I've had this watch for well over a month now and it hasn't gained or lost much in the set of times it's probably about running about three seconds a day slow which is pretty good for a watch of this nature it is a screw down crown as I mentioned before and it is a signed crown as well again I've not had any problems with the screw down crown which tends to be one of the QC issues I went specifically for the two-tone because I know that my skin tone goes quite well with the two-tone watch but also I'm not a big fan of silver high polished uh, middle mid links of watches so what I've gone for instead is the two-tone because I th feel that adds an extra variation to it. Now I haven't spoken about the price yet which makes you um, think that there's probably something wrong with the price but actually I don't really think there is. So price for this watch outside of a sale starts at around 80 to 85 pounds which is probably around similar in dollars as well. Coming up to the most expensive one and obviously I bought the most expensive one because I am a div. I bought the one that was the root beer style. I think the root beer style with the chocolate dial, the root beer style with the black dial and the left hand drive uh, black and green dial all retail for round about 90 to 96 pounds which is obviously the most expensive now I don't have a problem with that price I still think that's a very good value for money but one of the things that has crept up lately as we all know is the new NH34 watch now these NH34 powered GMT watches which admittedly don't have the root beer but have all of the other major designs so the black and blue bezel the Batman bezel the Pepsi bezel and the black and green bezel um, all retail for around 190 162 pounds uh, outside of the sale within the sale it was around 130 pounds obviously minus that for four dollars so it's around about the same price for both of them now that's not a bad price especially when you consider that you have the original version which is retailing for between 80 to 95 pounds so what is the big difference there well as I've mentioned before, one of the big differences with this watch, aside from the movement, which is the NH34, and we know that's going to be a much better and much more quality movement than the Pearl movement, it's actually going to be the loom on the watch as well. So from what I have seen on a couple of reviews, including Jody at Just One More Watch, where he's recently reviewed um, a Pagani design with the new um, NH34 GMT movement, the bezel of the watch now is loomed and there is better loom on the dial too. Now, those are the only two distinguishing features of the watch that will make it a better watch to wear. Is it worth that difference because it is quite a bit more expensive when you consider it? Or do you think it is worth um, just sticking with the old one if you're not so worried about the movement? So for me personally, I actually think that potentially I would have got the NH34 powered one if they did a root beer version of it. So take that on note, Pagani Design. Um, however, I also understand that there will be particular people who will not want to pay over £100 for a Pagani. So I understand why there's going to be a little bit of a mix in between. In my personal opinion, I think that 
the NH34 is probably going to be the watch to go for. As you know, NH powered or Seiko powered watches will tend to last much longer than Chinese counterparts. But then again, you've got to look at the price you're paying, the longevity of it, and just make that decision if it's worth it to you. So the Picardi Design GMT, what do you guys think of that watch? I quite like it. It's not my favorite GMT model. In fact, my favorite GMT model from Picardi Design is probably going to be their Explorer 2 homage. That tends to be my favorite style of GMT watch however again they don't have the NH34 with that and again with disappointing loom if you've got something that really is looking like it is a proper tool watch you want something that has good loom as well but guys what do you think of this watch let me know in the comments below have you bought this watch have you bought the NH34 let's get a discussion let's get a discussion going um, I'm also on Instagram so please uh, follow me on the links below I've also got a TikTok and I've also got my online stores as well that are still running throughout the Christmas period um, you might be able to get some next day deliveries on the Amazon store but otherwise it will be in the new year now but guys take care of yourselves and I will see you all in a future video